Have you ever wanted to 3D print your own dice? Well, obviously you have because you clicked on this video. The world of 3D printing dice can be an exciting one, but it can also be filled with danger. My name is Nash and I am the current 3D printed dice world champion. And I've been featured on the cover of National Geographic three times. I'm here to guide you through this exciting hobby full of mystery, wonderment, but also danger. Come with me as I show you how to 3D print your own dice. Before we start on our 3D printed dice master journey, I want to let you know that this channel is all about 3D modeling, 3D printing, and just talking about stuff for board games and RPGs. That's all we do, whether it's reviewing, like these awesome starter boxes that I have behind me, that's a video coming up, or whether it's doing projects like 3D printing dice. If you're into that sort of thing, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, show them who's boss. Don't let them push you around. You're in charge of them. This is your viewing channel. That subscribe button has been acting up. Give it a little slap. A little slap a slap. You show it. Who's boss? Don't let it control you. Anyways, I hope you guys have a lot of fun. This video was a lot of fun to make. Let's get on to it. When we talk about 3D printing, we must first talk about the equipment that you are going to use while 3D printing. A lot of companies will have you believe a lot of nonsense about the resolution of your printer. For instance, this is the Elgu Mars 4. The Elgu Mars 4 is probably, in my opinion, the best printer for printing miniatures and dice on the market today in early 2024. It has a full 9K of resolution. And if you're wondering, yes, the deadliest mountain there is, K2, only has 2Ks. So this is obviously a much better printer, right? When you're looking to buy a 3D printer for this sort of work specifically, there are other printers for other types of work, but chances are if you're printing off dice, you might also be printing off miniatures and things of that nature. The measurement that we are concerned about is not the K measurement. What we are concerned about is how small each pixel is. And that is measured in micrometers and that's abbreviated as a UM. So that's what we want to look at. The Elgu Mars 4 that I have behind me has an 18 UM resolution. That is one of the best on the market, especially for the price. Uh, it's less than $200. So this is the difference between a 45 UM print. You can see how rounded the edges are. You can see the strong layer lines. And here is an 18 UM print. You can see very crisp edges, almost indiscernible layer lines. You really can't see it with the naked eye. You have to use a macro lens to see any sort of resolution problems. I would say that at that resolution, the 18 UM resolution, you can't, it's not worth it to go anymore because your eyes can't actually see it. So obviously you can print dice with any resin 3D printer. The real thing is, is how much work you're going to have to do at the end of it and how exact the details are going to be on your dice. So the better the resolution of your printer, the sharper those details can be and the more detailed dice you can make. The next question a lot of people have is what resin do I use? And honestly, there are a lot of great resins out there and that's hard to answer. If you have a printer that is high speed and high resolution, most of the really modern printers are, I would recommend using a resin that can handle that high speed and high resolution. So. In this printer right now, I'm using the Soriatech ABS-like resin. It's a high detailed, high speed, ABS-like resin. And ABS-like means that it is a bit tougher than normal resin. And that's why I like using it for things like miniatures and printing Dice Master. One other thing that I would like to 
take a note on is how I clean my prints when they come out of the resin. Most people use isopropyl alcohol, and isopropyl alcohol is just fine for cleaning your prints. However, what I've found is after a little while, you pull a print out of the isopropyl alcohol and it's all slimy. And this is such a problem in the industry that they have invented like isopropyl alcohol cleaners, like whole gadgets that like process isopropyl alcohol. Listen, use isopropyl alcohol if you have, you know, pets or kids in the house. Isopropyl alcohol is a lot safer than some of the other chemicals that you can use to clean prints, but I personally use mineral spirits. I never have to change out my mineral spirits. I've been using the same quart for like a year and the prints are always completely clean and completely dry when they come out of the wash. There is no residue left over. Now here is a quick little tip that people who just start 3D printing might not realize. But if you intend on just using the same resin all the time, like I never use anything other than the Soriatech ABS like resin in this printer, you can just keep it in the printer. You don't need to empty the vat out every time you use it and put it away. As long as it's in there, it's okay. Just make sure that you stir it up before you print with it. I know that a little tip like that might seem obvious to most people, but it will save some people a lot of time and hassle. Now we need to make sure that the 3D printer is properly set up. Every 3D printer is going to have a leveling process. If you've had any problems with your prints or if you're just setting up your printer, make sure you go through the leveling process because that's honestly one of the main reasons prints mess up. Another common reason prints mess up is your exposure times. It is essential that you figure out the right exposure time for your printer and your resin. That's why I'm a proponent of finding a good resin that you like and just always using that. That way you're, you know that you're always in the right ballpark when you start printing. One of my favorite tests for figuring out the right exposure is called the cones of calibration. The cones of calibration are exceptionally good at getting me dialed in. I've honestly, I've tried all the other like weird calibration things and actually a printer like this tends to break those. Like it will print things that it's not supposed to print at certain um, exposure times and stuff. The cones of calibration made it perfect. Like after I, I spent maybe an afternoon running a whole bunch of them and I dialed it in and it's been golden ever since. So I would recommend spending the time. It is going to take you an afternoon to get the right calibration down. But once you do, you'll know it and things will be good. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to all the stuff I've talked about. So the 3D printer and the resin. I am not affiliated with them, but I do have an Amazon affiliate link I'll put below for them. And I'll also put a link to the cones of calibration so you can download it yourself. Okay, now that we have our 3D printer set up and working the way that it needs to work, it is time to do the most important part. And that is to slice and prepare the file. So we're going to use just a simple D20 from Dice Maker. I have added a little bit of like a, uh, a Viking knot design on it. And we are going to print this out and we're going to print it out in a few different ways and we're going to discover which is the best way to do it. So I have here Chichu Box and Chichu Box and Lychee Slicer are the two most common slicers you will probably come across. Honestly, most of the most other slicers are just copies of one of those two. In this case, I'm going to use this and then maybe we will use um, lychee slicer as well when we want to look at this. So here we have our normal D20. And what I think a lot of people do is they come into here, they go over to the support section and they hit the automatic support and away they go. Now, if we were maybe a little bit better, we'd come in and we'd switch over to the light supports here and let's pick up some of these, some of these little islands that are here.
All right, so I think a lot of people are just going to do that. And that's where we will leave this one. So we have one. Now there's something I want to point out. Is that let's say you're bringing in a die from a different program. A lot of times, you know, it might come in like this. flat on the bottom, you do not want that. Whenever you are supporting a die, you want to make sure that it's tilted up at an angle like that. You want a point facing down, and then you want everything to expand out of there. So let's add another, another copy of this, and let's be a little bit more precise with how we do this. First of all, I have a more complicated design on the bottom here. And what we want to do is we want to limit the amount of design that is facing down. It will actually print way better if it's facing up. So anything complicated, we want facing up. And so that means we're going to have to rotate it. And it looks like green. We'll rotate 180 and that is up on top and we got we still have the point facing down okay now let's go over to our supports Oops, we gotta select this one go over to supports and let's start manually adding support so I want to put a medium support a little bit thicker support right, right on the bottom there. Bam. You want that to be a good support. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take light supports. And I am just going to run them right up this edge here. I don't have to be super perfect, but we're just going to run it right up the edge. Make sure that we have lots of support. So we end up with something that looks like that. Now we also have to, what we have to do is we have to examine where we might get island. See this island that's forming right here? I need to put a dot right there. Oh, see there's a floater right here. So there's some difference there. I might bring in one and we might rotate this so it's flat. And I might just auto auto support it. Just so that we can see how that turns out compared to the other two. So these two are auto supported. And now let's use Dice Maker's um, 3D model support. It actually has one built in. So if we go over here, I also want to point out some people are asking about uh, adding curves and stuff to these dice. There's a little button here to, to add um, kind of different effects to the edges. But we're going to do a sharp edge. And then we're going to hit this that says generate fin supports. What you can see is it's done almost the same thing we did with the supports before. We'll just use the default there. 
And there we go. We can also click on this and we can say, oh, we should be actually fine, good to go. What we gotta do is we gotta go back in and we got to we'll pick all the little pieces. It does want that little edge found and it does want that. Maybe we'll go back into the other one. Let's go back and look at this one real quick here. And we'll look at it from above. So we can click over there. And let's see if we see any islands. Oh, there is an island right right here this barely one and so we did end up needing just one little support on a on a sharp edge you can see that's a, a sharp edge let's open up lychee let's have it do its automatic um its automatic support which is i think better than sheet two boxes and then i'm going to bring it back into sheet two box to do the final slice Interesting. Well, let's um, let's export this. Twenty lychee. Save. And we'll we'll bring it into here. And I want to point out one thing that Lychee Slicer did do, which I pointed out before. When we did this one, it put the more complicated design on the top because that's going to require less supports and it's going to print better on the top. So as you can see, both Lychee and me have decided to put that in the same spot and orient the die the same direction, which I think bodes pretty well for lychee slicer. Now I'm going to slice it. I, I've i used my settings from when I ran a bunch of those, um, the cones of calibration. And when I run the Soraya Tech resin that I like, I, I usually do kind of a longer exposure time on the bottom layers. I do one and a half seconds. Um, or 40 seconds here. And then I, one other thing that I do that might be a little bit different for you. And since my pixel is 0 0.018, I like to do my layer heights as close to that. And so I do 0 0.0 to 0 layer height. So that means that my resolution going upwards is the same as it is going side to side. So it should be the same in all directions. If you do not have a printer that I would say is higher than a 4K, I would say 4K and under, you can have faster print times by making this bigger. It's probably not going to affect the actual printer or the actual print. So I, I, when I want really good resolution, I will do a, a smaller layer height. Uh, I think 0 0.04 is pretty average. And for most machines, that is about what the resolution is. Nowadays, they are getting better. And you're basically, you're gonna sacrifice speed for resolution. So you decide, that's your decision to make. All right, we are going to slice it and I am going to put it on the 3D printer and we will see how it goes. All right, here is the results of our test. So starting off, and I'm wearing gloves because I haven't cured, I haven't cured these dice. They have just been cleaned and I do clean them in mineral spirits. So this is just a randomly supported Randomly um, 
and just a random kind of dice with no care given at all. And right away we can see a total failure on the bottom. These little divots aren't a big deal, but you can see that this whole face has completely failed. So yeah, definitely don't just stick the dice in there and hit auto support. That is not going to work out for you. All right. Now we have lychees auto support. We know that it's lychees because it did angle the this uh, difficult to support area to the top. And actually, guess what? Guess what face failed? That difficult to support face failed. So Lighty did the right move by putting it to the top. Let's take a look at how this ended up going. We still failed on the bottom. It's almost like puffy, I guess I would say. All right. Here is the light, or not the light sheet, but the Chichu box auto support. Let's Uh, we still have some of the puffiness. This one looks a little bit better. I think we would need to... I think that's a failure here on that 16. It's completely failed. Yeah, still puffy. The top looks really good. The back looks pretty bad. I think that is a failure. All right. High hopes for this one. This is the dice maker supported one. Let's take off those, offer little supports. And break each one of those by themselves. And we should pop off. We do got quite a bit of flashing here. Look at that. That is a little interesting there. Look at that. That is all cured. So it's like it, uh, like an eye drop or something. I think this can be sanded. This could probably, this is probably the most savable one out of all of them because you just sand that, that nub off. This flashing is going to come off. See if I can get the flashing off. There we go. Well, that broke off the tip. Uh, somewhat savable, but yeah, that that did not turn out as well as we were hoping. Now this is the one that we supported ourselves. And these supports are coming off nice and easy. And there we go. Still got a little bit of puffiness on the bottom, but it is definitely looking a lot better. I'm gonna hit that with some sandpaper and we'll see what it looks like after that. Yeah, I think this one will come come to. It will it will work. I, I would say maybe make the uh, maybe make the numbers just a little bit deeper too. I think we're going to get pretty close on the 19. And we're already kind of getting close to, uh, you yeah. know. So the numbers need to be a little bit deeper. 
but otherwise this will polish up real nicely. I think um, printing this a little bit deeper numbers, that is the way to do, to do it the custom way. Definitely a lot better results than the rest of these. One important thing to note is the tip on the bottom. That's the tip where it usually fails. So on the very bottom, see how nicely that, that is a nice tip. It's just like the top. And if it wasn't for that 19, I think that 19 needs to be a little bit deeper. So we'll, we'll print this with all the numbers just a little bit deeper. And I think that is the way to go. So mystery solved how to print good looking dice. So as you can tell, the world of 3D printing dice is a bit of a world of trial and error. You're going to have to try a couple of different things just to make sure you get it right. I see a lot of people just doing the bare minimum, just putting it into the slicer and hitting auto support. And that's not going to end up right. You got to make sure that you support all the edges and find all the islands. And you got to make sure that your settings are dialed in on your printer. Even after you do everything right, it is still going to take a little bit of trial and error to get everything just perfect. So don't be afraid of experimenting. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have other videos on how to 3D model dice if you are just seeing this for the first time. So I'll kindly point you that way. Or that way. Or I don't know which way. All right. Have a good one, dudes and dudettes and duderinos. We'll see you next time.